my God. <clears throat> Just got into the car and there's like all this stuff that I didn't recognize and I sent Mel a text like, Can someone break into our car? I don't recognize this stuff. Thinking that she like had bought some like weird, I don't know if it's a vacuum or a vape. And then I started looking around and realizing like there's all this weird junk in my car and I was like, I didn't even know like, it was like this weird thing, like, wait, is this even my car? Apparently, like, some homeless person, maybe, like, went and stole stuff from other cars and then sat in this car and just went through to see if there's anything valuable. So they they did end up stealing two of our jackets. That's why we have more. And probably nothing else. They didn't even take, like, the charging cable. It's just weird. Obviously, we forgot to lock it last night, which is stupid, but every now and then it just happens, so... <sighs> what a great way to start the week. I mean, I guess it could have been worse. Like they could have like damaged stuff, but like now, what are they doing here? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> Hopefully we can get a new start to the day and move on from my car getting broken into and me acquiring some new items that I don't know what to do with. I'm heading to Golden Road Brewing. Uh, in Los Angeles. I don't know if it's technically Burbank or Glendale. It's kind of right in the, the border of all those things. I think it's technically Los Angeles. I love Golden Road. Uh, I love their beer. I love their vibe. They have great space. The catch is, is that I don't know anybody there. I, do, I don't happen to know anybody at the brewery. Um, I've kind of been going to some breweries that I know people at to see if those could work. We're gonna go down there and check it out. The other thing is that I don't know if, from what I've seen of their space, I don't know if it's gonna work out. Any time that I've ever gone to have beer there, which has been a lot, every space is very well lit. And in order to do this special right, I have to shoot it twice. And I have to shoot it twice with completely matching light. And I think I've said this a bunch of times, but I don't know if people that are not in production understand this necessarily. Like if you look at the, the special that's currently on Amazon Prime, my, my tender look special, that was shot twice and we literally Frankenstein that thing together. Like it cuts back and forth between show A and show, show B like 15 times. And it's not to like, it's sometimes a joke just lands better and if you don't know it as an audience member and you just accept it as one performance, perfect. Again, I don't know if they have other spaces in the brewery, uh, we're gonna go and talk to them and see their level of interest. So I'm meeting Ruri and Donatella, and um, yeah, we'll see what happens. So update, I'm with uh, Ruri and Donatella here at Golden Road. Like I said, I wasn't sure how it was gonna turn out. It turned out very well. So I'm gonna go check out their space in Huntington. I think it's gonna work out, which is very good news. And their beer is amazing. I am like kind of emotionally charged right now. <laughs> I don't know if it's been conveyed through my, my, my Zane's World show, like just how difficult it's been to find a location uh, in LA that will work. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little overwhelmed. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm like trying try to hold it back. Gotta <laughs> tell, and Rory were incredible. They're familiar with the show, which definitely helps. They understand the brand. They understand what we're trying to do. They've seen the special that we shot at the brewery uh, in Anaheim last year. So they understand the the scope of what we're trying to create. Like I've seen some specials lately, some stand up specials that, you know, just have like a wall in the background and it's lit like it's a brick wall. And that's kind of the whole comedy club thing. But I want to create like depth and, 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 and interest and what's called bokeh, which means like the subject is in focus and the background is out of focus. It's just as important for me, honestly, like number one, it's most important that the show is funny and entertaining, but number two, it really needs to look amazing. It needs to look high production because we're in LA and it seems like this opportunity with Golden Road is gonna work out with them and my team working together, we can create something that's amazing and beautiful. So uh, the fact that they're just as excited to do the special as as I am, um, I'm actually like holding back you know, emotion and I'm sorry, like I shouldn't, like, what is this? I was supposed to shoot this special back in Hershey, Pennsylvania in, uh, 
<laughs> Stop it. What are you accepting an Oscar? Just pull it together. You I was trying to shoot this in Hershey, Pennsylvania, and at the last minute it fell through. We didn't have the production crew that we thought we were gonna have. And I did all these lead updates and the space is amazing. It didn't work out. So now I find myself in a position which I'm not very comfortable being in this position because I've worked so hard to not be in this position where now I'm left scrambling. Everything needed to align and things haven't aligned. So anyway, I'm driving down to Huntington Beach to check out Golden Roads location down there. They showed me some pictures, it looked amazing. So before I even go there, I know that it's going to work, but I have to put eyes on it and just stand in the space and just look around as a producer so that my team can come in and then start to take the reins from me. So the day before the special, I gotta be out. I gotta be out of, out of that headspace and I need to be in the entertainer headspace. I need to know that everything is working that the lighting and the camera, the sound, that I have all the best people on it, which I know that I will, and so that I can just sit back and be an entertainer and focus on, on the show. So, whew, whew, what, what a ride. <laughs> So this is, this is the space. I have to show you the view here because it's like, again, we have to black out the windows in order to uh, have consistent lighting. But the view that we have to black out is like, I'm telling you, it's criminal. It's a shot of, well, here it is. It's the, the marina with the snow-capped mountains in the background. It's like, we we'll have to black these out. And that means blacking out like so many windows but these guys are down for it and they understand why it's necessary, so that's great. I'll probably put the stage right here and then the chairs will go back this way and kind of be contained within the poles. Yeah, but I think we can fit about 170, possibly 200 people inside here for each show and that's it. So kind of small, intimate, but it's perfect. Woo, okay, I'm excited. This is. Fantastic space. And here's their, their their micro brewery here, which is amazing. That brewery was talking about making a beer for the event in there, which is incredible. Oh, okay. All right, this is good. I just sent the video that I shot of the interior to uh, Adam, uh, Hess, Shane, my, my producers. And then we're gonna have a scouting trip to come down here and talk about the final things just to put uh, physical eyes on things and just talk through the logistics. But I have a very good idea. I have a very good idea of what needs to get done. And I can visually now being here and seeing the space, like I'm 100% positive that it can work. It's gonna take some effort on both parties to make it perfect, but it will get there and it will be amazing. I'm gonna get a coffee. Uh, so it is, what's going on? Where'd you just come from? Can I help you? It's uh, April 3rd. My tickets go on sale tomorrow. Most of them go on sale tomorrow. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm just gonna pull a late night working on... Why is this where you need to lie down? <sighs> I'm on my way to Lawless Brewing with Nick. Huh? The pocket bear. <laughs> <laughs> he loves that. Uh, we're going to shoot an episode, actually two episodes. Uh, I go that way. Yeah, you are. Okay, good. Of Crafts and Crafts. My guests today are Josh Server from All That on Nickelodeon and Jack Maxwell, Booze Traveler, my nemesis. If that's true or not, you'll have to watch the episode to determine that. Nick is um, behind the scenes. And he is uh, humming and whistling the Mandalorian theme song because <laughs> he just watched it last night or just this morning? I mean, last night. Last night. But all the time. Yeah, all the time. Okay, that's on loop. And by the way, who do we see at the airport in Burbank? Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal. And did we go over and talk to him? No. We are scared and polite. Hey, Frankie! Hi! What are you doing? What are you doing? It's so good to see you. Good morning. We just, oh yeah, just go right for the scratchers. This Perfect. The only reason I come here. <laughs> yes, this is it. Franklin. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey. It's so weird how he likes me more. Oh, is that is that right? It's weird. 
it's weird because he's like giving me way more attention than me. Yeah, because he feels bad. So this is a camera and it's a camera. It's also camera A. This is on me. And then this is B camera. This is on the, the guest. And this is the, the wide shot right here. Uh, backup, boom, mic. And everyone will get all mic'd up and loved when they get here. Information is running into this box. Judging by the headphones, has something to do with audio. Nailed it. I don't know if we're gonna necessarily keep calling it a podcast because we are talking with a company right now who is interested in actually taking this show and putting it on TV. You would be able to still get it on YouTube um, and then listen to the audio versions wherever podcasts live, um, like Spotify, Apple Music, Stitcher, Google, Amazon Music, all that stuff. But also get it on places like, uh, like actual Amazon and Roku and Vimeo and all, all the places that, Tubi, whatever. This is Shane Hartline and Nick Jerry. Both, both friends of mine. Shane uh, is an actor, you might know him from Mandalorian. And the reason I say that is because nope, every nope, time he meets- Okay, hold on. Take two. This is Shane Hartline, who you might know from Obi-Wan. And the reason I say that is because every time he meets somebody, he goes, hi, Shane Hartline, you probably Obi-Wan. You know, it's kind of like Bob Vance. Here's Bob Vance Refrigeration. Yeah, I'll do this autograph. What are you doing? <laughs> I'll do it if you leave me alone. Here's the thing, I always say, you probably remember me from Obi-Wan, but the joke is I was a stormtrooper in a scene, episode three, 15 minutes in on the transport. <laughs> what the f is that bullshit? Get the joke out, Zane. Oh, sorry. The joke is you probably recognize my face, but you don't recognize my face because I played a stormtrooper, so you didn't see my face. Yeah, I think it's the best you've ever looked. All right, kid, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> wow. Make a wish. Don't meet your heroes. <laughs> So Nick uh, is, is my opener on the road. He's Shits up, please. sorry. Um, you've done how many shows? How many shows have we, have we done together? It's like 230. And then Shane, uh, as you might know, because he produces and edits um, both Zane's World and the uh, Crafts and Crafts. Everything you're seeing currently on uh, Zane's YouTube channel was made by me. So if you like it. Tell you me, and if you don't like it, tell Zane. That's right. Maybe he's on the phone. He's on the phone. Hey. <laughs> he's on the phone. He'll be in in a bit. So we just um, yeah. we did we painted uh, rocks of each other. This is <laughs> this looks more like me. It's supposed to be you, but it looks like me. And That's I weird. can't draw blood. I'm terrible. <laughs> That's <Look at> that. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Good that job. Good. good job. That was fun. That was fun. Jack Maxwell, you can catch. The episode we did on my show Crafts and Crafts. Now we're gonna drink some beers and like friends. Fade into the yeah, fade fade in the fade in the background. There you go. All right, we just wrapped the second episode of this week's podcast with Josh Server from All That, uh, Nickelodeon's show All That, which I hope you know what it is. And then Jack Maxwell was earlier, and this lighting is brutal. Um, it was fun, man. This is a fun show. I don't know. I got a good team, and it's a, such a fun show to shoot. And it's so fun getting to sit down and talk with people and do these little silly arts and crafts. So, if I could change one thing about it, more, more me. <laughs> yeah, more. more me. Yeah, more you, Shane. I fe I feel bad. So Josh Server was on my podcast. Why do you feel bad? Because I asked you, well, because I asked you trivia questions that were outside of the scope of, quite frankly, anyone's knowledge. Anyone's knowledge, but also the worst part was that you framed it that they were for me, that you spent yeah. time, yeah. that they were. I do a six pack challenge in the show where I have six questions that are catered to the person. And then I, I went off the rails and I, I catered them more to me. Like I, did I would get, know. I think did I get one? I don't know. One or two out of I don't, six. It, you was know what? You'll, it was brutal. You'll watch the it show was brutal. and you'll you gotta see. find out. You'll find you gotta out. You gotta find out. Here's the good part is so yeah. I cut the show. I'm, yeah. Josh is a way better friend to me than you are. Yeah. I'm gonna make him look really yeah. good. Yeah. Yes. Who signs yes. your checks? Oh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough situation. Hey, Josh, remember Listen. the thing I literally just said about making you look good? Okay, I'm not, I can't yeah. do that. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. I just went to the front door and someone handed me this. And it's not for you. Melbert Lamprey? Shane. Shane? What an what? asshole. What? <gasps> this is not for you. I'm so happy. <laughs> this is not for you. You know what I'm going to do? No. I'm going to save it. No, I'm saving don't. it. Just go away. Here's the deal you can have a cookie, 
but you have to be on camera. Hell no. <laughs> well, Shane is the one editing this so he can choose to cut this out. Go away so I can eat my cookies. Shane, whenever he comes by here, he brings Mel cake pops. Shane Pops. Which Mel calls Shane Pops. And now he has bought me, I didn't tell anybody it was my birthday. Ah, oh! and today at the Crafts and Crafts, recording the podcast, I told him that my it was my birthday and he got all mad at me. I'm like, no, I don't like tell people about my birthday anymore because I'm so old. Yeah, you are old. And then he went and did something like this. I know, he's so nice. He's a better husband than you are. Whoa! I just want you to go away and leave me alone with this box. That's fine, all you gotta do is be on camera uh -uh. and lowering into the shot. <laughs> I don't want you to eat that puppy. Oh my God, holy cow. Whoo! -ah. Taking a nice break in the middle of the day. Um, we have locked down the date at Golden Road Brewing. And it's gonna be uh, fantastic. The, the issue is the layout of the room. There are poles in the middle of the room. I don't have to do this when I say poles. We're gonna meet down there on Sunday, which is Easter, Adam and I, and just go through the final logistics. So I've done a bunch of layouts based on the schematics of the, the brewery. And we have a configuration that we think can seat um, about 180 people, which is uh, perfect right where we want to be. We still need room for the cameras to all maneuver, but um, yeah, just taking a break and updating. Lizards, I like lizards. Hey, who's going to their new home today? I'll give you a hint. He's wearing a tuxedo. Okay, hold on. Hold on, you're trying to get my shoulder. Oh, you, you think? What are you doing? So, um, the kittens are going to their new forever home today. Uh, Grant and Millard are going to their new forever home today. So, I haven't been here as much to bond, but I think Mel is going to be pretty heartbroken. Yes? Yeah. These are a very, very sweet batch of, of kittens. I have a churu, which says irresistible, but I guess no one wants it. What if I just blow the... The smell. Huh? What's that? What? You know that noise? You know that noise? Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. And you know what? Clean your room when you guys are done. So this is Notch behind me. She is a squirrel that's been coming here for at least two years, maybe maybe three, maybe three years. And Notch is named because she has a little notch in her ear. So we know who she is. She just kind of showed that she was friendly right off the bat. And I just started feeding her by hand. And now she will come and scratch on my office door for me to come out and feed her. But since my office is now like under construction, I, I haven't really seen her. So I was just downstairs and Mel called up and said, your squirrel's here. All the cats are on the porch as well. She's a mama and she needs some nutrition. So um, we're giving her some, giving her some, some critter crunch. Pretty neat. And we also have a hummingbird over here that we've been watching. Um, Mel spotted this nest because the hummingbird was just kind of flying around. She saw it land in the nest. And then we saw the eggs, which were little, I mean, no exaggeration, they're literally the size of Tic Tacs. Now there's babies in there, baby hummingbirds, and they're just, I mean, I don't even know how to describe how, how small they are. Right, Notch? Yep. Corn's best from my hand. What? Don't get, don't get mad. See, I told you. Yeah, you want to just be friends? Just let me out. Just let me out for just a second, Daddy. That's nice. Do you know how much you just opened? Pinocchio, what's going on, bro? That's my fault. What did you, what did you write? Yeah, what are you writing in this email? Oh, that looks great. <laughs> Pokey. To your good health, buddy. Whew. It is amazing to think that this is still the same week <laughs> that uh, we locked down Golden Road. I've had very nice conversations back and forth with them. They continue to just impress me with their 
professionalism and kindness, to be honest with you. So I am now heading down back to the brewery in Huntington Beach, which is, which is about an hour from my house, to go and meet with Adam Horner, who is one of the producers of my stand-up special. He produced my last stand-up special. So we're gonna meet down there and go through the space. It's locked, it's happening. Tickets are on sale, zanelamprey.com. We're just going down there to get the ball rolling to see what we need to do to make it as amazing as possible. This is Adam. He beat me here. Hello. So we're now in the space. The issues are one, as I talked about before, the light. The other issues are the, the poles. And then the other issue, which may be of interest, is there's nowhere like what well, you'd have in a typical theater to like mount the lights. We have to figure out where the lighting's gonna go. But it's all, it's not really, they're not problems. They're not really issues. They're not really challenges. They're just really logistics. This is, this is Jared. Jared and Mel back there are the ones that are gonna help make this all happen. I'm telling everybody about the fact that we have to take like a, a brewery, a beautiful functioning brewery, and turn it into a theater. Okay, Which nice. is Which is what we're gonna yeah, do. I know. I, I don't know, people usually don't see the magic of it, you know what I mean, of like, what did you start with and then what, what did you end up with, so. We're gonna just put it all on paper, hand it to you, and then show up day of, and it's gonna be done. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's am amazing. We spent about an hour and a half going through the layout, the camera positions, the lighting, the chairs, the art direction. At this point, we're thinking that we'll probably do, uh, rather than a barrel wall in the back like we did last year and that we were thinking about for this year, we're thinking that we might just do curtains, like, um, like basically blacked out curtains so that the light just kind of like just disappears into them um, and then light the whole place with um, Edison bulbs and then um, like as an homage to Golden Road do the lighting in like gold I think their other color is blue and then just have the audience in kind of like a blue wash with the last special because we didn't do any behind the scenes I wasn't doing Zane's World at that time you don't really see what the room started out as, like it started out as a, a, a barrel room, just a barrel aging room. And then we turned it into like a theater, like not even a theater, like a, a soundstage theater. And there was about 30 people that were part of that whole production and making everything happen. I'm excited that people get to see the, the process here. So off to Tahoe tomorrow, um, to do what I call a workation. <laughs> I'm, not very, I'm not a very good vacationer. I will uh, use whatever downtime I have to get some work done. Get a lot of Zoom meetings, a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails to lock in not only this special, but the like eight to 12 stand-up shows that I'll do in Southern California leading up to that date. If I just walked on stage and did the show, it would have been like two months from the last time I performed and I would be so rusty. Well, I'll get up there, start working on the show. I'll also look at all my game tapes on this next trip and watch like 40 performances, tweak them, see what worked, what didn't work and kind of lock it all in. Before you know it, May 13th, Saturday, May 13th, we'll be here. We'll be shooting down here in Huntington Beach. Hopefully you'll be there and we'll make a little bit of history. Yeah.